I ask you tonight, are you going to throw away your life? Are you going to buy into the American dream, minimize suffering, maximize comfort, maximize ease, maximize security, build bigger barns, work for the bread that perishes, lay up treasures on earth, covet the praise of man, and be happy for 80 years and perish? Is that the way you're going to waste your life? Or... Are you going to see Christ crucified and risen and reigning and bearing your sins as the infinite treasure in your life that he really is? See to it that no one takes you captive. Here's a warning from Scripture. Your freedom is at stake. The enemy of your souls is laying plans this very week to take you captive. What are you going to do? How much time are you spending preparing to meet those threats? Or are we like those who simply go wandering about our lives and we never think about the danger until we've already fallen into the pit? As Christians in this day, we cannot live apathetically. We cannot live in an undisciplined fashion. We've had the warning before us for a long, long time. It's right here, right there. The Colossians had the challenge in front of them. We have the challenge in front of us today. How are we going to live? Are we going to lose the radical nature of our Christian faith? Compromise it so that we can get along. We're the young men and women of this generation who will hold their lives cheap and be faithful unto death, who will lose their lives for Christ, flinging them away for love of Him. Where are those who will live dangerously and be reckless in His service? Where are the men of Prayer. Where are the men who count God's word as more important to them than their daily food? Where are the men who, like Moses of old, commune with God face to face as a man speaks with his friend? Where are God's men in this day of God's power? Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you're living a life uh, where you're just kind of going, yeah, I can't do this, I can't do it. It's, it's, it's a lack of belief in God in that type of life, the Bible says. It's impossible to please Him without the kind of faith that these people had. And when you read Hebrews 11... Their faith was not just something that was internal, that no one could see. Their faith manifests itself in action, where they said, you know, I'm going to head this direction because I know God will come through for me. And He always has. He always will. My God is faithful. He'll be with me always, as long as I'm out there making disciples and teaching everyone to obey everything that God commanded. Oh, my dear friend, who cares about your best life now? Eternity! The day you stand in those granite halls before the Lord of glory and kings, the greatest men on earth are divided and split and culled. Some cast into eternal hell and some invited into eternal glory live for eternity. These Olympians, how, how majestic they are, but only for a moment. They start training when they're four and five years old. They never do anything but train until they're 22. They run a nine-second race for a medal they hang up, and that's it. Cannot you give equal for eternal things? Some of the greatest men of God have been men very limited in their, bo in their bodies, in their abilities. They were so limited that they had to focus themselves into one thing. To the ministry. For bodily discipline is only of little profit. 
It is a trustworthy statement deserving, deserving full acceptance. For it is for this we labor and strive because we fixed our hope on the living God. This is not some martyr thing in which we uselessly give our lives to nothing only to be pulverized without hope. No! We serve God and God will honor us. We have fixed our hope on that and that gives us strength. Strength. Oh, this life is a vapor. I'm 47, but yesterday I was 21. Where did it all go? It is a vapor. While you have strength, preach. I praise God that in His providence as a young man, I spent myself in the Andes Mountains and in the jungles of Peru doing what I no longer have the strength to do. While you are a young man, while there is strength in you, labor with all your might. Take those stupid video games of yours and crush them under your feet. Throw the TV out the window. You were made for greater things than these. People who make a difference in the world, people who turn it upside down, people who affect this world are people who know the Word of God. I believe that with all my heart. And there are people who can stand on their feet eyeball to eyeball with people and defend what they believe. And there are people who can take people where they're at, say, here's what I believe. You take it to the Scripture and let it stand the test of Scripture and you'll find it confirmed. You give men answers that you can defend on your feet and answers that you can defend through the Word of God and you've given them answers. We can't be content in our churches to have these half-baked, half-saved people that come along and there's no real commitment. But where we see it, brethren, people's hearts are being turned to Christ. We need to rejoice where you've got people who are dead in their sin and you take the gospel and you preach it to them and then these people who used to be slaves of this sin are now brought to the place where they're obedient from the heart to this word and we can offer that up and it's for the glory of his name among all the nations brethren this is what we've got to be thinking all the time men are perishing they're perishing around us brethren and this is our day the Spurgeons are gone the Whitfields are gone the Wesleys are gone the Raven Hills are gone now is our day give us some men who know the truth <laughs> and who will declare the truth and who will stand with Athanasius and Polycarp and Calvin and Luther and Whitfield and Edwards and who will declare from the housetops that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation.